physics is one of the most interesting of the sciences, and it's notorious for developing some of the most mind-bending ideas ever imagined, things like electrons or even atoms being both particles and waves. Other examples include the equally astonishing claims that space can bend and flex and change its very shape, or that most of the matter in the universe is of a form that we've never seen before called dark matter. These are just amazing. Each of those topics could be the subject of its own video, and I was talking to myself, mulling over which one to do when I asked myself a simple question. Why not combine them? So that's what I did. I'm going to tell you about an actual experiment that is being built that weaves together all three physics ideas. The experiment is called MAGIS 100, and it's being built at Fermilab. So let's get started. We'll start with an oft-repeated statement, which is that, at the atomic level, the wave nature of matter is extremely important. That's true for photons and even for atoms. Let's talk about both of those. To begin with, you know what waves are. Waves are something that go up and down periodically. The distance between adjacent peaks is called the wavelength. The height of a wave is called the amplitude, and, of course, waves can move. Two waves, when they encounter one another, can interfere, which means add together, with the result being an even bigger wave. Or, if the two waves encounter each other, with the peak of one wave encountering the trough of another wave, the two waves can cancel each other out. Waves can occur in many media. Most familiarly, they can occur in water. And if you have two water waves, they can interfere with one another, either enhancing each other or canceling each other out. Of course, water waves are not the only type of waves. Light is also a wave made of oscillating electric fields, and those electric fields can interfere, either enhancing each other or canceling each other out. If you send a laser beam through two slits, you can see this phenomenon. The exact pattern of bright and dark spots depends on what scientists call the phase of the two waves. Basically, that just means the two waves have wiggled a different amount when they arrive at their destination. The most common way that this can happen is one wave travels a longer distance than the other one, but the super key point is that the two waves wiggle differently. Now, you may not know it, but other subatomic particles are also guided by wave mathematics. Electrons certainly are, but so are entire atoms. In fact, it was the French physicist Louis de Broglie who proposed in his 1924 PhD dissertation that small particles the size of atoms or smaller can act like waves. Furthermore, and this is an important point, the wavelength of an atom can be incredibly small, thousands of times smaller than ordinary visible light. This is super important as it means that you can use it to measure super, incredibly tiny distances due to small shifts in the alignments, which, remember, means phase of the waves. So that's the gist of quantum mechanics. What about the bending of space and dark matter, and how are they connected? Let's start with gravitational waves, which were first detected a few years ago. Literally, a long time ago, in a galaxy far, far away, two black holes merged and shook the very fabric of space and time. These gravitational waves roared across the cosmos at the speed of light, washing over the Earth in the fall of 2015. Because of the distance, gravitational waves changed the distances between a pair of mirrors by a tiny, tiny distance, about one one-thousandth the diameter of a proton. But that's a super crucial and super relevant tidbit. Gravitational waves change the distance by a tiny distance, and I should remind you, atoms have tiny wavelengths, and scientists can use even tinier shifts of their wavelengths to measure super-duper tiny distances. In an earlier video, I talked about the wave function, which is a mathematical formula that is related to probabilities. Each atom is described by a wave function, and each wave function has this oscillating wave behavior. If you have a single atom in a single configuration, what scientists call a state, the wave function doesn't matter much because all of the probability, 100%, is in a single state. The phase doesn't matter. But if you have an atom in more than one state, then the wave nature matters. First, because now the probabilities are shared between two states, 
and second because the different phases of the different states change the probability of detecting either state. So now we're on to something. That sounds like a technical and scientific wedding made in heaven, and a team at Fermilab is trying to make it happen with an experiment called Magis 100. Let me tell you how it works. The first thing you need to do is to take atoms and put them in a mix of two different energy configurations that oscillate at different rates. You zap the atoms with a laser, which does the mixing. These two different states each have a different phase, and the difference grows with time. Because this is a quantum thing, it's not that individual atoms are in one state or the other. They're actually in both states at the same time. They don't pick a state until they're measured. You then zap the atoms with another laser to measure the two states and see how many of each kind you have. The percentages depend on the phase difference between the two energy states. This means that you measure a certain number in the lowest energy state and a different number in the highest energy state. Now, if you can separate the two states by a small distance, then they might travel different paths if a gravitational wave sweeps through your detector while you're doing the measurement. This would affect the different percentages of the two energy states. You need to have the atoms be in a place where they aren't affected by local gravity, and that means either put the whole apparatus in deep space or find a way to put the atoms in free fall while they're being tested. That's the big idea. How's it being implemented? Well, there was a small demonstrator model built and tested at Stanford University that was 10 meters long. And the long-term goal is to build one that is 1,000 meters long. But that's a huge increase in technology, so the obvious thing is to build one of intermediate size, say 100 meters long. The Matter Wave Atomic Gradiometer Interferometric Sensor, or MAGIS for short, is being built in a vertical shaft 100 meters long at Fermilab. The 100 meter drop is where the MAGIS experiment gets its name. This shaft was built as part of Fermilab's multi-decade neutrino program. Basically, we used it to be able to put detectors 100 meters underground. But now it's there, and it's a perfect place to house the MAGIS 100 apparatus. Three different devices will be housed along the 100 meter long shaft, one at the top, one at the bottom, and one midway. Strontium atoms will use because they make excellent clocks, and furthermore, they're quite resistant to magnetic fields. That's handy because the Earth is a giant magnet, and that would mess things up. There are a number of operating modes, but in one configuration, the strontium atoms will be hit by a laser which launches the atoms upward, after which they experience freefall. The launching laser both kicks the atoms upward and puts them in a mixture of low and high energy atomic states. Then another laser causes the two states of the atoms to come together and get measured. It's easy to say, but it's incredibly hard to do. That's why it's necessary to make a 100 meter long detector rather than jumping straight to the 1000 meter one. The detector will make interesting measurements, but it will also allow researchers to develop the techniques needed to make the kilometer long version. So what sorts of things can this detector technology see? Well, gravitational waves were first detected by the LIGO detector and they could only see high-frequency gravitational waves. Basically, that means they could only see gravitational waves created at the moment two compact astronomical bodies, say two black holes, for example, collide and merge. In contrast, the MAGIS detector, especially the larger MAGIS 1000 detector, will be able to see much lower-frequency gravitational waves. The apparatus should be able to see when two black holes or neutron stars are orbiting each other, but before they actually merge. That will allow conventional astronomers to point their telescopes in the right direction before the merging event happens. Another thing that the atom interferometry technique will be able to do is see when two very heavy black holes merge. LIGO was able to see black holes merging, resulting in a single black hole with a mass of 50, 60, 80 times the mass of the Sun. But there are black holes at the center of galaxies with masses millions or billions of times that of the Sun. They didn't just appear with such large masses. Maybe black holes with masses of hundreds or thousands of times that of the Sun merged over and over again to make these cosmic monsters. If that's happening, Magis will give us a window into the process. But before we look for gravitational waves, the Magis 100 experiment will look for dark matter. 
Dark matter is, of course, thought to be a form of matter that is five times more prevalent than ordinary matter. Dark matter experiences gravity and nothing else. We're not 100% sure that dark matter exists, but if it does, it's likely composed of subatomic particles. Those particles could be heavy or light. Magis 100 is well suited to look for light ones. If dark matter particles are light enough, they act more like waves than individual particles, and those waves will interact with the quantum waves in Magis 100 and change the interference pattern. And if that happens, Magis 100 will see dark matter. That would be super cool. It's going to take a few years to build and shake down the equipment, but I'm super excited by the prospect. The expected capabilities of Magis 100 program are staggering. They will use quantum mechanics of waves of entire atoms to first look for dark matter and then gravitational waves. It's going to be completely epic. So, this video was kind of mind-blowing. I love physics. If you do too, I hope you'll like, subscribe, and share. And of course, comment. I read the comments. Now, before you leave, I'd like to draw your attention to a new Fermilab YouTube series called Even Bananas, hosted by Dr. Kirsty Duffy. Kirsty is awesome. She's charming, funny, and smart. However, I still have her beat soundly in the realm of dad jokes, and I think I edge her out on the basis of my keen fashion sense. You should add her videos to your watch list. She's a fellow physicist, which means that she's a kindred spirit, and I like her a lot. And it goes without saying, and I'm sure she'll agree when I say that physics is everything. Thank you.